Hi, hey Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Today we're starting off our new series. This is the first episode called Portable Power. Sometimes the power goes off. And what prompted me to do this is the other day in my last video I talked about portable power and starting this series. Um, I had a scheduled outage. Sometimes they're not scheduled and they can be out for who knows how long. And I do have a generator that will run the whole house even the air conditioner if I have to. I have to manage my power when using the generator. I don't really want to run the generator every time the power goes off for a couple hours. Uh, that can be kind of a pain to do that. So I've decided that usually when power goes out, it takes you a couple hours to establish whether or not uh, the power is going to be out for a long time. Uh, usually my cell phone has an app on it to to contact the power company and when there's an outage in my area, it helps me predict when it'll be back. But that takes an hour or two to really get stabilized as to how accurate it can be as to when you can expect your power to come on. But I don't want to go two hours. I don't want to fire up my generator if the power is back on. And I don't even know it because I'm running my generator instead. So I've decided that an intermediate power supply that I can use temporarily for the bare minimum things not only when the power goes off normally, but if it's going to come back on, that's all I should need. If it's going to be out for a long time, then I'll kick into management, power management mode, and I'll run my generator for an hour every, every six hours or eight hours or whatever it's going to be. And I'll use this to run the bare essentials, like a couple of fans if needed, my router, my cable modem, um, and at least one computer, maybe two computers. Or if I want, instead of running the computers, I could run my uh, TV and my cable box. Uh, in all reality, there's no reason why I wouldn't be able to do that. So I'm looking at different possibilities, and I would run those. This unit should be able to run those types of light-duty items for five or six hours with about 70 amps of storage. So we'll go over what I've got here exactly in a second. I wanted to show you the cart first because I had built the first cart and it was really horrible. Heavy, heavy, heavy and was not very well designed. But I wanted something for when I had that outage to make sure that I could even do this and do it economically and not have it, uh, not have it be a real pain to do. And this has worked out pretty good. Uh, I was pretty successful on that power outage uh, last week. And... That box was really horrible, though. So I redid it. Basically, what I did was I took an old axle here out of a stroller. This is the rear axle on a baby stroller. It has the wheel locks on it and everything. And I put a single uh, ball transfer type caster on here uh, so that I can get a pivot. And this makes it roll around when it's in the upright position. At the same time, being the two wheels on the back, they're 8-inch wheels, but also I made sure that the axle is centered right underneath the batteries itself so that now when I tip this back, I can actually tip this back with one hand without any problem. I have this center area of gravity where I don't even really have to take much to hold this. So this makes it real easy to reeling back and roll it around like a dolly. So mobility on this is going to be easy, quick, and with 8-inch wheels, I should be able to roll it even out into the yard, like if I want to take it out back and use a power tool for a few minutes instead of running a cord. So it's going to be handy having a good cart. It's sturdy. When I built this cart, I basically built two panels. I had my axles here, and I built two panels, 24 inches by 12, and basically it's quarter-inch plywood, with a three three quarter by three quarter inch uh, hardboard running around the outside perimeter to make this panel very sturdy, and I made two of them, one for each side, and then I sandwiched between the two of them with several one by fours that are eleven inches or eleven and a half inches wide. So my cart is eleven inches, eleven and a half inches wide on the inside, so that I can fit everything in here. There's four basic components to this particular unit as of right now. I have my batteries. I have two Harbor Freight batteries, 35 amp hour batteries. So I have 70 amp hours of storage 
theoretically, and I've got them hooked up in parallel so it's a 12 volt system. I'm running, I'm running the two batteries down on the bottom shelf. On the next shelf, I have my charger, which has a, three, a 0.3 amp trinkle charger, so I can run this thing 24 hours, 7 days a week with that trinkle charger, and it won't overcharge my batteries, but they'll always be charged up. So if the power ever goes out unexpectedly, I can grab this. I know they're fully charged at that point, and I can off and running with a full charge to begin with. Um, and this is my inverter. It's a Stanley 800-watt inverter. And what I did with this is it has two plug-ins here for AC, um, that pivot. But the problem with these is that they're connected in so you can't replace them if they ever go bad. And like any plug-in, I'm afraid these things might end up not plugging in very well after a while. So I decided to plug a power strip into it. And I put the power strip here and I have six outlets here. Am I going to use six? No, probably not. But I can because it doesn't matter how many things you plug in. It only matters how much draw you're putting on the system. As long as I stay under 800 watts, uh, I can run with a power strip. It doesn't matter. So between the power strip and this, I have the 2 amp USB port here. I'm going to put a 4 uh, plug in on that so I can plug up to 4 items onto my USB. And I also want to put a cigarette lighter on here so I can tap directly into the 12 volts with something that's a 12 volt system um, if I want to run 12 volts directly, uh, like a small fan or something. So I also put a voltmeter on here that I can turn on and off and that'll tell me my voltage on my battery so I know how charged up they are when I go to use it. So when I'm ready to use it, I just unplug it, roll up my cord out of the way, roll this to where I need it, and plug my appliances in here and I turn it on. And I'm ready to go. I have now 110 voltage coming through here. So uh, it should last for five to six hours based on the idea of what I'm going to be powering and what I want to power with it as of right now is I want to power my cable modem in an outage. I want to power up my router so that I can have my Wi-Fi system and I want to be able to power up one or two computers in my house uh, so that we can use the computers in the internet even during a power outage. As I explained before, when you lose your house power, it doesn't mean you lost your internet connection. Uh, as long as you power up your modem and your uh, Wi-Fi system, you should be back in business on the internet without any problem because the cable company uses their own power source on their infrastructure of powering their um, wire that comes to your house that gives you your cable box and all that. Instead of two computers, I could plug in one TV and we could sit there and watch TV if we want to instead. What is my power output versus how much I've got here? I'm working on those things. I don't know. I can only go theoretical by what I think I know about it. Uh, running the, the items that I want to run, I figure that I'm running close to 700 watts when I get done, if I run everything that I want to run. And if I'm running 700 watts through a 70 amp hour battery, then... I should be able to get somewhere around six hours of life out of my battery is what I'm figuring. And I may be wrong on that. Sometimes my math isn't the best in the world. But we're going to find out. I'm going to run some tests with it. I'm going to unplug my computer and plug this into that and run it for a day or so. See how long I can go with this power source. Um, when I'm not using it, I'm going to find a place to plug it in and let it set against the wall so it's always charged up when I need it. So this should fit nicely into my scheme of things at this point, and that's what I was looking for. I want to be able to, when the power goes out, I don't want to run out there and fire up my generator, especially if it's going to come on in 15 minutes. But sometimes you don't know how long it's going to be out until after an hour or two of it being out. So for that first preliminary time, so I can get on the internet and find out what's going on or watch a little bit of TV while I'm waiting for the power to come back on, this will be work perfectly for that. If it turns out after I've verified how long the power is going to be off after a couple hours, uh, if I need to, 
then I'll power up my generator. And I'll run it for an hour or so, three times a day. Something along that line is what I figure I'm going to have to do. So I can recharge my batteries, use my recharge and cool down my refrigerator and freezer, run the furnace if it's winter time, and I'll also be able to recharge my batteries with the battery charger here at a high amperage so that I can kick them back up and get them charged up within an hour theoretically so that I then can turn the generator off run this for another five or six hours and then turn it back on to go through that cycle again I figure if I'm going five hours or eight hours a day or at a time my freezer my refrigerator and those types of things I should not be a problem I should be able to at least be comfortable in my house then even without power on long-term outages where it's out for days and that's the plan so this is going to take a lot of load off of my generator though rather than having to run that generator constantly when I fire it up for 24 7 I can run it for an hour or two a day at a time and then supplement the simple power usage through here in between those times so it's going to be a big addition to my house and to helping me get through power outages and also, this is going to be great that I can, it's so easy to move around. If I want to take a power tool and go out in the back of the yard, way up in the corner, and I don't want to run a power cord out there, I'm only going to do something I need five minutes. This will be perfect. I just roll this out there with the tool, get done what I got to do, roll this all back, plug it back in, and I got power out there without having to run the cord. So I think it's going to be handy to have around. So, if you want to build one yourself, you have questions about what I did or why I did what I did, let me know. I am going to improve it. Uh, once I get a 12-volt uh, plug-in on here, a cigarette lighter, I also want to put a four-way USB port on here so I can plug multiple USB items in to have them charge up when I need it, as well as having the six AC outlets. Um, I, might con I am considering whether or not I want to invest in solar collectors uh, at least a small set maybe a 200 watt type of thing or 100 watt i'm not sure if i even need it between my generator and this this should feed my household needs to be able to stay functioning in my home even without the power for periods of time so but we'll see i will let you know as it goes along as to how this goes and as i make improvements and yeah i do want to dress it up so it looks a little nicer but this is good and solid. It's as light as I could make it. The other one, the first one I made was weighed a ton. This thing is much lighter, so it's much better. So that's where I'm at. I am also in this series, besides making improvements to this as I go along, hopefully some of the ideas might even come from you guys. But when I get this thing going along, but I also want to work on some other portable power ideas that I have, like the portable plug-in of one outlet, using Roy B batteries I can plug in there and then I can get 110 volts out of it and I can carry it in my hand and go out and use it for a couple of minutes on something I think I can do put something together like that and that's what I'm kind of playing with now to see what I can and can't do with that so <clears throat> stay tuned portable power it's part of my future and hopefully you'll get some good ideas from this and it'll be part of your future too so uh, stay tuned for that if you have any ideas or any comments about this or something you don't understand, you want to ask a question, leave it in the comments. I read them all. I try to answer them all. So uh, if you like this video or if you learned something here, hit that like button. That always lets me know I'm going in the right direction. Uh, most importantly, though, please come back again because, as you can see, we're nowhere near done. Thanks. And you stop by again, okay? We'll see you soon.